I guess is where I am this morning. I'm on the banks of Jurassic Mountain Resort, Thailand. And I would say I'm sitting here waiting for my first bite. It's about half past seven in the morning. My first bite came after about 10 minutes of it being in the water, which resulted in my first ever red towel. Only a little baby, about 35 pound, but really, really beat me up. So it was nice to get a small one and realize how hard they, they pull back. I'm here with my mate Chris, who's over opposite me in peg 16. So we were really lucky because we we had the draw last night. Chris picked out number one and I picked out number three. We weren't really wanting a good draw because we wanted just to kind of get ourselves accustomed with the place. But um, Chris went for peg 16, did quite a few fish like yesterday, quite a varied species, you know, array of species. It did an hour palmer the other morning. And I expected the person who picked out number two to come in peg one, but he went for peg 12, which was strange. Um, so, you know, I had to come in peg one, stitch this end of the lake up. So, yeah, what today's gonna bring, I don't know, but um, I'm already a happy man with that red tail, but I'm sure there's gonna be a bit more action on the way. Well, what an incredible day's fishing that's been. I don't really know where to start. Came down this morning, cast out, predator rod down the edge with a couple of chicken hearts on and within 10-15 minutes I'm looking at the list up there I had a, uh, a red tower about 30 pound uh, well chuffed with that one and throughout the day the actions just continued I even stopped for breakfast went and had a full English with my mate Chris um, been over there and had lunch with him as well so the rods haven't been out the water all the time periods you know of lull periods and then periods when the bobbins just put it out and then it goes i've so far i've got about an hour to go before the end of the day at 6 15 and pull the rods in there's still a chance of a big fish me and chris are both in our primer swims and we both got one down the edge really and hope of one of those but uh as i said the fishing's just been incredible i'm looking at the list up there first was a red towel um i then had I think I've had eight fish today. I can't really see because my eyesight's really bad and they're slightly out of order. First was a red tail about 30 pound, then a carp about 30 pound, and I thought I was going to be the best controller here. But then um, out of the blue, the chicken the heart rod down the edge went, and I knew this was a better fish, but I knew it wasn't a red tail. And it happened to be um, a Siamese at um, 115 pound, one of the known fish. So that was. Uh, you know, one of the targets that the holiday for me achieved was a fish over a hundred pound. And then I've had another, another carp. I think that was uh, 65. One, um, just had one about 50. And then I've had five, I think it's five um, red towels. Two best were 55. And then I had a 65 as well. So um, unbelievable. I've been fishing pellet. I've been scolding it. Scolded pellet, I did that before I came down with a kettle in the uh, the apartment. Scolded pellet, clipped up, put a bit of elastic, but obviously make sure you take the, uh, the clip off and put your bait runner on. Um, bit of elastic there, right down the edge, bit of, bit of elastic there as well. Quite often those, those um, red tails, they go flying under the, the floating vegetation down there. You keep your rod low. A couple of them have actually got snagged and the guides just get in the water, get the line and put a straight pull on it at a different angle and those fish come out. They know what they really know what they're doing. So as I say, I've got an hour to go. Hasn't been a brilliant day for Chris. He's been over in peg, uh, peg 16, probably the, the one that, where most arrow piners get hooked and landed here. You hook one, you tend to lose the odd one. Sorry about the noise, but the uh, staff are running backwards and forwards with bits of tackle for, for the anglers and food that's delivered to your swim, etc. So, um, yeah, Chris's day hasn't been brilliant. He lost a fish first thing, which I really felt for him. It, that was on his carp rod. He's, haven't, he's had a couple of drop runs on, probably from alligator gar, fishing right down the edge over to the, um, the floating vegetation. And then he had a, he had a nice... Uh, a nice carp there, which was about 70, 80 pound, 85 pound, I think. So he's well chuffed with that. But I think he's probably been looking over the lake and seeing me constantly bent into action all day. That's been a bit frustrating for him. But that's fishing. I'm sure there's going to be a day during the next uh, nine because we've got 10 days holiday. This is the first day. 
there's going to be a time when he's going to be pulling fish out and I'm just going to have to sit there and watch that fishing. So um, incredible place. What a first day for me. It can only, you know, if, well, you know, I never, never achieved. I would have said if I have two fish a day, I'd be happy. Eight fish today. Chris has had one. Could have had two. So, uh, you know, it's, um, it's everything it's been made up to be this place. So uh, really looking forward to, well, the next, you know, next few days. Okay, just a quick recap on what happened at the end of the day yesterday as you know i signed out with an hour to go that's the time the hour oh that's the time the hour <laughs> primer kind of showed but for chris it wasn't your day was it you got bit peg number one yeah a bit frustrating really but lost an early fish um and had one a bit frustrating watching someone haul on the opposite bank but <laughs> That's but, fishing. <laughs> but fortunately, Golden Bull's here. Picked out number one, two days running. So what swim have you come to today? Oh, your swim, of course. <laughs> Peg number one. So hopefully, you're sort of doing the same as I did yesterday, apart from you're slightly different this morning. Um, I've put a mackerel down the edge, or a small mackerel. They're, bloody little, they're not like our mackerel. Um, down the edge, just in case there's an arrow palmer still cruising around. Uh, then I'll go on the chicken hearts like you did yesterday. Absolutely. Down the edge. And you're, you're more likely to fish boily, whereas I'm, I've got peg number four out of the bag last night. So I, you know, as mates do, it's nice to fish next to each other. I'm in peg two. The guys had nine fish yesterday. I haven't put my rods out, just done a bit of baiting up. And I'm just going old school like I did yesterday with my carp rod two drill pellets, I'm um, scalded some pellet, moulding it round the lead, just fishing nice and accurately, underarming it about, you know, three rod lengths out, and yeah. hopefully, they had nine fish up there yesterday, and hopefully a different species have come along, but you know, yeah, you never know. let's just uh, hope your rods go yeah. more than they did yesterday. I'm, on the boilie. I'm, yeah. I'm fishing boily snowman rig, uh, yeah. see yeah. what happens. So here, here's to uh, day number two, yeah. boom. So, my peg today is peg number two. As I said, the guys had quite a few. I'm looking up there, they had nine fish, mainly carp, Siamese, but I think they did have an Indian carp or something. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. It's nice to be next to Chris. I can run down there and we can get a bit of video coverage of action shots, etc., which would be nice. Um, yeah, just to recap on yesterday, an hour to go. Um, I think I lost an alligator gar um, and had a, a small, Red tail about £25, which the guy thought it was an hour primer, and I was going, no, and then he said it was £30, and I said, no, it's £20, and it was. So, um, just a real small one, and a smaller carp, so it was a really nice way to round the day off. Um, I did have two takes at once, uh, one of the guys had to run down from here, pick the rod up, but nothing was there, and I think there was alligator guard towards the end of the day, picking up the baits, and very, very difficult to catch. So, if I catch any other species apart from the Siamese, and the red tails, I'll be a very happy man, but I'm hoping that him down there catches a big one. But as you can see, got me lucky t-shirt on, so um, should have had it on yesterday, really, because that was a, a red letter day. Um, great food in the evening, a couple of pints, and then early to bed, up early. As I said, I baited up, rods aren't even out yet at the moment. Um, it fished much better, kind of like late morning into the afternoon yesterday and I haven't heard the hooters go off today, so um, I'm just taking the, the mornings, you know, the first hour might get a few fish, then you'll have a lull, and then it picks up as the day go on, as the fish come in and find your bait. Fish. The last one was how big? Fifty. Fifty. If this is any, this is probably as good a fifty as the one before. So it's coming alive in the afternoon. It's coming up to half eleven. This is when they turned on yesterday. All right, lovely, lovely. Fish. Well, good morning. It's day three. It's just gone seven o'clock. My rods are out in a new swim. But let's just have a quick recap on yesterday. I picked out, well Chris picked out peg one again and he went in peg one um, and ended up, I think it was, with seven red tails and one Siamese, a red tail, biggest red tail was £65. 
So it was really a day, red tails down there, the Siamese carp didn't move down. I went in peg two, just, you know, so we could be close together, get some video work done, that which we did. I set out my stall for some um, Siamese carp that came out of that swim the day before. It is a very much an afternoon war, uh, swim, but by sort of half past two in the afternoon, I'd had hardly any liners, no bites, and in the end I had to kind of like revert to a kind of predator rod down the edge, had a quick red towel, about 45 pound, I suppose, 40 pound, and then worked at it, just kept changing my rigs, popped up, trying to buy a bite, just couldn't buy a bite, the fish just weren't in my swim, um, and then I started firing pellets in, I had a few swells coming up in the water, and then right at last knock-ins, the rod went off, and I had a, a I think it's called a chow catfish, about 35 pound, that really made my day, because it's one of the, the kind of like rarer ones, and uh, a new species, so um, as I say, I've got my rods out, I'll let you know what swim I'm in in a few minutes, but hopefully today there's going to be some more different species, fingers crossed. Chris has actually gone up into peg three, which is a carp swim, so um, we're not together, we can't even see each other, um, but he might come up and double, you know, join me uh, down here later on in the day, but um, let's see how the day progresses. Well, it's about half past seven on the third day and last night's draw in the bar I picked out peg three so that's Mr Consistent I've had a three a four and a three and peg 14 which has been the consistent swim I would say and peg one had already gone so I've come in peg 16 Chris only had one fish in here but I think he was it was our first day and he was fishing it probably for an hour primer which I've got a rod out for I've got a popped up mackerel and I've had a couple of big arapaimas come up over the top of it so it's out for the first hour and then I'll probably start going down on fish chunks to hopefully get a gar maybe so this is not about catching loads of fish today I'm sure if I went out on kind of like chicken hearts I could get some red tails but I'm trying to steer clear of the red tails today this rod here it's just out on pellet at the moment edging me bets for everything but I've asked for a pellet waggler to come to this swim so I'm going to be firing out some pellets two or three every sort of 30 seconds, hopefully get some paku um, up on the surface. So it's completely different tactics today. Um, gonna have to really work at it, hopefully get some swells out there and fish the float and hopefully, you know, a few new species have come along. So uh, as I said, um, Chris is in peg three, which is a carp swim and it's only half hour into the day and I've already seen him getting wet in the water with a side me, so uh, he's having a good day. So uh, yeah, he said if he's had half a dozen eight fish, um, he might just come and double up with me. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Well, for me, being the sort of angler I am, one on the float means so much more. Lost a big gar earlier, but or something. Um, but this makes up for it. To catch one, one of these, I've been feeding for about, I don't know, Ooh. feeding pellet for about an hour as the guides were saying and uh, no signs up on the surface and then first cast at about six foot I don't think this was up on the surface float berry took me by surprise but I might be an old man but my reflexes are still there and I wasn't expecting them to fight quite as hard as they do Unbelievable. One of the target fish for me that is. And absolutely so made up with it. And let her go back, shall we? All good to go. Thank you, baby. You've made my holiday, you have. There, well there we go, this is one of the ones I was really after, on the float as well. Had a paku earlier, about £25, just sat there feeding away on the float, as the lad suggested, thank you very much. Second cast at about four foot, on a pellet, been feeding for about an hour, effort equals reward I think they say, don't they? And I'm going to have that bottle of wine later. I think they say this one's in the 40s 
Absolutely made up with that, lads. <laughs> Back she goes, yeah. What a creature, aren't they? She's in there. She's in there. She's in there. <laughs> Smiling. Left hand slightly higher up, slowly. That's it. Good. Big smile. We're good. Okay, Ollie. We're firing line here, mate. <laughs> Left hand up a touch more. Put me top, man. Okay. Yeah, 10 meters have been in the firing line. Good down. Good back down. Good job done, mate. Thank you. Right, so the morning of day four, we're in a different swim, swim 14, which we've been trying to get into all week. It's been quite consistent and it's one you can double up. So, yeah, so we thought you know, we were a bit of a social today. Yeah, we haven't been able to, you know, double up. So it's just nice to, to, to have a chat and spend, you know, a few hours, you know, yeah. chatting away. So let's just recap on day three. Chris was in peg three. Peg three. How did, yeah, in, how did your day in. go? Uh, started quick. Uh, Five, ten minutes in, I had a 70 pound uh, Siamese. Uh, then it slowed off a little bit and just plodding, picked a few up during the day till the afternoon just went dead. I ended up with six fish, five carp, two 70s, uh, and a 55 pound red tail. So, you know, really good day. Seems we said two fish a day we'd be happy with. So, yeah. we're well surpassed that. I was in peg 16. Uh, an arapaima swim, a predator swim, but my aim was to just put another species on the, the board and I really wanted to catch one on the float, the waggler, which is more like a pike float you're casting out on a four and a half pound test curve rod. Yeah, Not the easiest thing to do. And I literally just sat feeding pellets for an hour looking for signs. Didn't have any signs, so I just picked up the pellet rod, cast out, the float just bobbled, bobbled and off it went and one of the first fish I had of the day was a 25 pound Paku, which fought like hell. But that went in the back, you know, in the net, and I was just made up. That was my day. That was your day made day already, yeah. But then it really just got better because I had a couple of um, Siamese. I had another uh, one of the Siamese, only a small one, 20 pound, but that, that means as much as the, the ton pluser because, again, I had that on the float feeding the other side of the swim so I was just feeding pellet, feeding pellet two sides like a match angler and then just casting down after an hour. You seem to catch a fish and they spook. So I had two fish there. I had a red towel on the bottom, not a big one. Um, and then again, you know, later in the day, just went over. We had we had lunch, didn't yeah. we, in your yeah, swim. you kept coming around for lunch. And so and it wasn't like full on. Went back, started feeding again. Out went the, uh, the pellet waggler rod again. Didn't, I think it was second cast, it was a bit of a bad cast, float disappeared, up to fish, didn't fight as hard as the Paku, but a few moments later in the net went a, a 45 pound, you know what they're called. Tambaki. Tambaki, <laughs> I keep forgetting yeah, what they're strange, called. A tambaki, absolutely fantastic. Um, put some baits down the edge, some mackerel down the edge and right in the corner for an hour primer, put the bait down there. And then um, after a few minutes, it was away. It was about quarter to six now. So, you know, we only got half hour left. Put that down there, off it went, up to fish. I really thought, I really thought it was going to be an hour palmer, but it was a big red towel. And I'm thinking, shall I put another bait down there? We've only got 15 minutes. But then again, when you're on a roll, you're on when a roll. <laughs> went it down there, dropped it right in inches by, you know, from the bank, the concrete bank down there, fed the rod back, put the rod down, off it went again, and you know when you've got one of those big arapaima because 
you know, I don't know how long it was. It wasn't one of the big ones, but it was big enough. I'm big aching. Enough it, it? Yeah, and enough. the guys, the team here, they know how to handle their fish. They did an absolutely fantastic job telling you where to put your rod. I didn't realise they had it in the net, but they, no, you know, no, in it no, went first it. time. Yeah. Great fish handling, you know, got some photos. And uh, 139 pound hour palmer. One of my targets was to hook one, let alone land one. So, you know, it's day four now. Yeah, three we've days had, in, and we've had a match. Three Don't days worry. in. We said two fish a day would be happy in because sometimes some of these venues are hyped up to be more than what they were, but this has not been hyped up. No. This is just absolutely superb fishing. Bang on. You do have to work at it, especially to get other species, but, um, you know. Anything that happens today is just a bonus, really. I'm going to have a nice lazy day. We're in a swim that's more carp, so a lot of side yeah. knees. But Should be you know, we can't we can't fault the the you know the the, the resort, the fishing, oh, no, not the team, anything. What a, you know, three days we have, and we we still got six days to go, mate. <laughs> seven, seven, <laughs> counting today. Another seven yeah. days. So we'll let you know how we get on later today. Well, here we are. I'm not too sure what this is. Do you know what this is, Chris? Chow fryer. And that was caught on the float on a pellet. I just missed a bite. Been going far in pellets in for ages. Had a Siamese, and then another species come along. Absolutely made up again. That's species number six. Is that another bottle of wine, Chris? I think maybe. Not a big one, but a lovely, lovely fish. All right. You can see we've got this lovely walkway between the swims and our little hut where we do all our rig tying and everything. And Christopher, what are you up to? <sighs> well, a quick recap on yesterday's event in Peg 14 where me and Chris doubled up. Uh, straight away, within a few minutes, Chris lost a fish um, and it was a really quiet day over the whole lake. I don't think many, you know, any, no one caught more than probably seven fish, um, right? But I think everybody caught peg free. There was only one fish. So it was a really slow day throughout the whole of the complex, uh, just something in the air. A few different species caught though, which was nice. So um, that was, uh, gave me confidence that there's more, more, on to, more to add to the list. But anyway, I think it was after lunch and I actually hadn't caught a fish. I tried the pellet waggler a couple of times, you know, just firing out those pellets for, you know, 30, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, and then having a few casts over the top just didn't happen. Um, a few loads and loads of frustrating liners are below where I was firing pellets and I tried playing about with rigs and just couldn't get a bite. I think by early afternoon, Chris had managed to land two Siamese, Nothing massive, up to about 60 pound. Um, I know it sounds stupid, but we're even sliding them back now without photographs, getting in the water photographs, because, uh, you know, <laughs> how many photographs do you want of, the, of uh, Siamese and red tails? So we've been trying to keep away from the red tails as well. Um, <laughs> although they are beautiful fish and they fight like hell. Uh, great sport, but we'll probably have a day on those later in the week. Um, dinner came and I just hadn't bought, a, you know, could get a bite um, so I went out on the pellet waggler again and instead of feeding it you know for an hour and then casting over the top I decided just to feed cast which is bl blooming hard work with a four and a half pound test curve rod and a big light pike float um, but eventually I got a bite and I got like a 30 pound Siamese on that, which I was really, really chuffed with because any, you know, any fish to me on the float is just a bonus. Nothing, nothing better seeing that float go striking on a big rod and it's just ripping line off you straight away. Um, carried on fishing and I think we ended up with seven fish. Chris couldn't add to his two. Two. He was getting loads of aborted runs, had a hook pull on one. It was just, just a mad day for him. 
I picked up, I think, three, three Siamese on the, or, you know, the baits on the deck. And then later in the day, had the float go, missed a bite, it was really gutted because I wasn't getting any liners or bites. I did have a couple of little kind of bobbles which showed me there was fish in the area. But you know, that's throughout the whole of the afternoon, firing pellets and casting this float over the top. But I had a bite, missed it, cast back out, float went, struck into a fish, line being ripped. And after, you know, I don't know what seemed ages, put the net, you know, the ghillie came in, put the net under, and it was a, a, a different catfish, a silvery type catfish. Um, so it was another species. But then I looked at that and I thought, the ghillie wouldn't let me lift it out of the water. It was late, I had to keep it flat on the surface and it was silver, unlike the one I had on peg two, which I was told was the same species. But I went back to the clubhouse later in the evening and I showed Tom the catfish I caught on day two. And in fact, he called that a big Y, which is a cross between a striped catfish and something else. So like a hybrid, like an F1 but still a different species. And he said they only come out two or three times a year. So one of the rare ones to the bank. So it was species number seven, actually. So as I said today, I'm not expecting much, if anything. Um, hopefully Chris will get hundred pound uh, Siamese and uh, we can have a nice beer and celebrate later tonight. The start of day five and it was always gonna happen and we were going to pick out some high numbers and you know 11 balls in the bag i think um i picked out number nine chris picked out number 10 so we're up the far end of the lake um i've picked i think it's peg nine which is um not exactly the best one it's up in a corner if you can say this is a corner because i've got plenty of water lots of aerators to my right um, but it's a good alligator gar swim and I'm going to set my targets out today to fish just for alligator gar. I've got a float out there, cocked with a four ounce lead, short hook clink, it's just the rules we have to apply by. Slightly smaller hook today and I'm fishing a small kind of like matchbox size of um, catfish chunk. And I'm going to alter that depth and let it just drift into this bay throughout the day and hopefully you know, get a few bites, and if I'm lucky enough, set the hook and land one. But um, they're not easy to catch the alligator guard, but we'll see how it goes. I've got another bit of um, catfish chunk on the rod on the bottom. I saw a fish move out there. It could have been anything. Again, I've cut down the size of my bait, so I'm going for maybe a different species on that, a smaller catfish. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm not expecting much. Chris has got peg four, which is a big uh, Siamese carp swim, quite often does over 100 pounders. Um, it's quite a, a swim where you've got a fish quite close in. But um, yeah, he's quite happy because one of his targets was a 100 pound Siamese. So he's in a swim that is easily capable of doing it. So uh, yeah, we'll see how the day progresses and hopefully I'll get a toothy, toothy long toothy gar by the end of the day. Well, it's about half past five or just gone on day five. Just coming to the end of day five and it was never going to be easy. I was in peg nine, Chris was in peg four. And, you know, we could well have easy blank today. Our target was really a couple of fish a day. And in fact, although neither of us have caught what we set out to do, I wanted an alligator gar, never easy. Um, and Chris wanted 100 pound plus Siamese. As it's gone, Chris has had two fish, both Siamese, I think the biggest was 70 pound, and I've had two chow catfish. Now, they are the hardest fighting fish I've ever, ever hooked. They brought me to my knees, they don't give up, and the first one was 45 pound. I had that on the float just with a chunk of catfish, um, trotting it through the, the aerator water comes to a standstill and I just looked up earlier in the day and thought where's my float and off went the line that fought really really hard as I said it was 45 50 pound and then the bottom bait was away uh, just before lunch uh, it was absolutely chucking it down and Chris sent me a whatsapp message saying I hope no one's playing a fish in this well I was and I'm not joking that was twice as hard as the Arapaima. 
Um, she went about 55 pound, took me round the corner. The guy came round and said, you need to get some, some braid back on that reel because uh, you're getting a bit low. That's how much it ripped off. Um, superb fish. Um, as I said, the hardest fighting fish I've ever, ever hooked and probably will ever hook um, in fresh water. So um, we're going home. It's about 45 minutes to go or just, uh, just less than that. We've still got a chance of fish. I've had lots of little pickups on the um, catfish chunk couple of aborted run obviously you're putting the hook in the in the chunk of uh, flesh um, so you can cast it a long way if you hair rig it there's a good chance that that hook will be outside the gar's mouth so if a catfish does pick it up and you get an aborted take it's possibly because the uh, you know it should have been hair rigged you can't really win on this one but we're going home we're really happy we're going to go and have a, a nice uh, pad thai chicken pad thai couple of beers and then uh, hopefully when the draw comes tonight uh, we get a better draw than nine and ten but we can't complain we've had a good draw first four days and uh, then yeah I'll bring you the next five days um, in in part two